Okay, just a, a shorter message today. We're looking again at great prayers of the Bible. And uh, we've been looking recently at how prayer isn't just a slot machine where we want a blessing from God. Um, but it's an opportunity for us to spend time in God's presence and to enjoy him. The chief end of man is to worship God and to enjoy him forever. And Devon said, Amen. Amen. Um, so prayer isn't a magical machine, a vending machine, but it's an opportunity to spend quality time with God. Now, of course, you can ask for your needs. Of course, you can pray for your neighbour and your family. Of course, you can do those things. But it's more than just give me, give me, give me. But it's also, Lord, I just love you and I want to spend time in your presence. Um, it's literally turning your eyes upon Jesus as we were um, singing just a few moments ago. And we've already looked at the prayer of Jabez. Uh, the guy that said, Lord, bless me, not because he was greedy, but because he wanted to be a channel of blessing to others. We looked at the prayer of Elijah, who called down uh, fire from heaven to demonstrate to the people that the Lord God was sovereign in his time in his nation when the people had turned their backs upon God. And then the land was barren, it was parched and dry. And Elijah prayed again and God sent a mighty storm of rain to refresh the land. And that's a picture of revival in the Holy Spirit coming from heaven. And then we looked at the prayer of Hannah, a lady who had a terrible time at home. She couldn't have children and she was mocked for that. And she went through such a difficult time. It was a tough season. But she kept praying and she kept worshipping. And she remained sweet in her spirit towards those that were giving her a hard time. And God heard her prayer and turned things around for her. And then last week, Colin very kindly preached for us. And he spoke about the prayer of the Apostle Paul. Paul was a man that knew how to pray for himself, but also for the church. And I wonder how many thousands of people have been blessed, not only in Paul's literal um, life on planet Earth, but blessed because of his prayers that he prayed all those years ago. Paul prayed that the eyes of our hearts would be open and that we would somehow understand the incredible greatness of God's power at work towards us that we would be empowered by mighty inner strength by the Holy Spirit can you remember what Colin was speaking about last week that God wants to strengthen us and empower us and equip us so that we can do exploits so that we can live this supernatural life that he's called us to and that we might know just how wide how deep how long and how high God's love is for each and every one of us. I think Paul's prayer was an incredible prayer. You can read those prayers in the book of Ephesians. And uh, I, would, I would recommend when you've got some minutes just to sit in a comfortable chair and read those prayers and make them your prayer. God, let me know how much you really love me. God, touch me so I can be empowered. Lord, will you, will you help me um, just as you help the Apostle Paul? And if you pray with faith, God will hear you and he will answer that prayer. But today I want to just speak about one of the shortest prayers in the Bible. Now, I could be wrong, um, and I am very open for you to come running up to me afterwards saying, Pastor Richard, you, you got that wrong. There, there is actually a shorter prayer. But I found a prayer that's basically three words long. If you can find a prayer that's shorter than that, um, maybe I'll give you a bar of chocolate. <laughs> Who knows? Only the first person that comes to me, mind you. Now, Lynn will be quickly Googling at the back <laughs> to see if she can run to me first to get the bar of chocolate. But Peter prayed three words. He said, Lord, save me. Hey, I think that's a, a pretty powerful prayer. Short, but also significant. We know that Jesus had just fed the 5,000 and many more beside. And then he told the disciples to get in a boat 
and to cross over the lake. He was going to join them later. And so as the disciples got in the boat and they began to cross over the lake in obeying Jesus, Jesus went up onto a mountainside by himself to pray. And then he noticed that the disciples were a long way from the land and yet they weren't getting very far at the same time. They were a long way from the land, but they were struggling on the lake because it was stormy, the water was choppy, the wind was blowing against them. And I know what it's like trying to run against the, the wind, but imagine being on Lake Galilee and, and the wind is blowing in your face and the waves are working against you. And as much as they're trying to row, they're not getting anywhere very fast. And then we see that whilst they are struggling against the elements, Jesus walks out towards them on the water. Jesus walks on the stormy water. Jesus is the son of the living God. And as such, he can do anything. Do I hear an amen this morning? Amen. Jesus can turn water into wine. He can feed the multitudes with just a little picnic lunch from a small boy. He can open the eyes of the blind. He can cleanse the lepers. He can cast out demons. He can heal all kinds of sicknesses. He can forgive all kinds of sin. And wrongdoing. Jesus can speak to the wind and the waves and command the very elements. And the Bible tells us that he can do all sorts of miracles. There is nothing too hard for our God. He is the God of miracles. Now when the disciples saw Jesus walking towards them, they were terrified it wasn't halloween but they were terrified because they said look look look, look over there it looks like a ghost coming towards us and through the darkness and through the, the storm and the wind and the waves they could see this kind of ghostly figure getting closer and closer to them and they were terrified for some reason, they thought it was a ghost. They were absolutely scared. But as they were terrified, Jesus spoke to them at once. That's what the scripture says. He spoke to them at once. And he said, don't be afraid. Take courage. Here I am. My Jesus is the Jesus that comes to each and every one of us. And when we are in times of peril and in times of fear and in times when it feels like the inky darkness is overwhelming us, Jesus comes to us and he speaks into our fears. And we have many fears at times. And he says, do not be afraid. Jesus doesn't leave you on your own. <coughs> He comes to you. He abides with you. And in Matthew chapter 14, verse 28, we read, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. So Peter is invited to walk on the water. How cool is that? Has anybody ever tried to walk on the water? I've been on holiday in some nice places and I've gone to the edge of the swimming pool and I thought I'd do a Peter. And uh, I don't know if anybody's tried it. But I've, I've walked off the side of a swimming pool and I haven't been able to walk on the top of the water. But I've, I've sunk down straight away into the deep end of the swimming pool. 
How cool is it to be able to walk on water? Very good. It is. <laughs> and in a similar fashion, though, I, I do believe that Jesus is calling us to walk on water. Now, I'm not saying that you all go down to the canal by Colin's house and uh, you walk on the water there because you will get very wet and it will probably be dangerous. But what Jesus is saying is, in inviting Peter to walk on the water, I believe it's a, a, it's a picture, it's, a, it's an illustration of the fact that God is calling us to live in a supernatural way, to live a supernatural life. We are natural beings and yet God is calling us into the supernatural. He's calling us to be filled with his Holy Spirit, not to be drunk with wine like some people get drunk, but to be full of the Spirit, singing and rejoicing and making melody in our hearts to the Lord. The will of God is for every one of us as believers to be full of the Spirit of God. Dr. David Petz once said, don't ask God to send the fire. You need to give your life to the fire. And if we want to be full of our Holy Spirit, we need, we need to say, Lord, you can have all there is of me. Sometimes, you know, we just want to click our fingers and expect something magical to happen from heaven. But the, the miracle happens when a man or woman or a boy or girl says, Lord, you can have all there is of me. Like Paul said in Romans chapter 12, lay your life upon the altar. And when we lay ourselves upon the altar, then the fire of God will fall upon us. When we pray, when we worship, when we speak in tongues, it's like we're fanning into flame the fire of God. And so with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we can also walk in the supernatural. The Bible says that God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with a Holy Spirit and with power who went around doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. Hey, God is with you. Amen. And God wants you to walk around. God wants you to get out of your chair, as it were, and to walk around and in your life and in your workplace and in the community and in your family and in your circle of friends. God wants you to be a supernatural person. When there are problems, when there is darkness, when there is all sorts of issues that the rest of the world cannot cope with or understand, God wants you to be the answer. And you can be the answer because the same anointing that was upon Jesus rest upon you. It's the same Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And didn't Jesus say greater things than this you'll do to his followers? But that's not what I want to talk about. And my time's rapidly going. Here we see Jesus is inviting Peter to walk upon the water. And somehow Peter sees the wind and he sees the waves. And I don't know what happened. It was all going swimmingly well, excuse the pun, when suddenly Peter sees the water, the waves. He feels the cold water. And I don't know what happened, but for that moment, he takes his eyes off Jesus and he begins to sink. And as he began to sink in the dark waters of Galilee, he cried out to the one alone that he knew could save him. He cried out to Jesus, Lord, save me. One of the shortest, one of the simplest prayers of the whole Bible. And yet, friends, it is the most significant prayer any one of us could ever pray. Romans chapter 10, verse 13, majestically says, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. saved. Jesus immediately reached out and he saved Peter. Jesus didn't look for one of those life boys, you know, uh, with red stripes on it to throw out to Peter. He didn't look for a life boy. He didn't get on his mobile phone and call out the lifeboat service, you know, on the shore. He didn't do a risk assessment but he immediately reached out and saved this man 
that was sinking. This man that in the moment of his desperation looked to Jesus and called out to him. And I want to say that Jesus will immediately save any man or woman or boy or girl that reaches out to him in faith. Jesus will save all who call out to him. Lord, save me. Three short words when uttered in faith that will take a lost sinner drowning in the dark waters of their own rebellion and sin and place them instantly in the arms of the one and only Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm glad I know who the Lord is. It's Jesus. He is the Messiah. He is the answer. He is the anointed one. He is the promise of God who came into the world to save sinners just like you and I. Jesus is the healer. He is the deliverer. He is the miracle maker. He can do anything. Lord, save. We all need to be saved. We need God's salvation in our lives. And at times in our lives, we need to be saved from physical perils as well. Me. Lord, save. Do something miraculous for me. We've got to cry out ourselves. It's a personal salvation. It's a personal salvation. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This Lord save me prayer has been a prayer that I've prayed not only the day I gave my life to Christ many years ago, but it's been on my lips more than once over the years. You see, it's not just a prayer of salvation, but it's a prayer that you and I can cry out in moments of sudden, serious situations. Have you ever had some sinking moments in your life? I've had plenty of them. I've had that sinking moment when I've been awaiting the results of an endoscopy. Saying, Lord, save me. When I've been in the hospital and they put the camera down my throat and I felt something wasn't right in my insides. And, you know, you Google things and you you get to see all sorts of worrying conclusions. And we overthink things. But the day the camera went down my throat, I said, Lord, save me. And he gave me peace. And good news was that there was nothing wrong. I've been awaiting exam results. Lord, save me. I've done as much as I can. I'm desperate to get, you know, to be able to graduate. Lord, save me. I've been awaiting news on the phone. And I've been feeling all jittery inside. And Lord, save me. I remember falling over in the road and twisting my ankle badly last year. In the pouring rain, about six o'clock on the Redditch Road, lying in the gutter of the road. I couldn't move for a few moments and, and all I could do in my tears and pain was say, Lord, save me. And he did. When I've been shaken by things, rattled on the inside, I've said, Lord, save me. And he's brought me through all these things. And the same God that saved Peter, the same Lord Jesus that reached out instantly, the same Lord Jesus that has helped me through many dangers, toils and snares, is the same Jesus that will help you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Let's never forget today that God loves us more than we could ever imagine. Let's remember the truth of the Bible. His ear is not death. That it cannot hear. His arm is not shortened. That it cannot save. He is a saving God. Jesus is coming to you. And he comes to you. And he's here with you right now. And he speaks into your fears. And he says do not be afraid. And in the words of dear Joe. Let me finish by saying. Shalom. Shalom. God is peace. He is your peace. He comes to you. He is the saving God. Whatever your situation, whether you need to be forgiven of your sins or whether you need to be plucked out of dark waters, whatever it is, Shalom. It will be okay because Jesus hears and his nail pierced hand can pluck you out of those torrents of water. He saves. So turn your eyes upon Jesus. And remember, 
Remember the shortest prayer, maybe. Lord, save me. It's only a short prayer, but it's the most significant and the most powerful. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.